Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Will White, and I'm the director of the Hawaii Budget and Policy Center. We're a research and advocacy organization that's working to create economic justice for all of Hawaii's people. And we're here today because voters across Hawaii and across the country are starting to recognize that the wealthiest among us are able to avoid paying their fair share of taxes, which deprives our state of much needed revenue that we can use to invest in our schools, our infrastructure, and affordable housing that our keiki are gonna need to have a secure future. Now, no matter which island we live on, how we make our money and what we do for work, or the color of our skin, most of us believe in caring for our families and leaving a better future for our future generations. But if we're gonna accomplish that, our state is gonna need additional revenue. And our tax code is a powerful tool that we can leverage <clears throat> to ensure uh, that our working families can have a brighter future. Now, tax policies that privilege wealth over regular working people simply trap resources at the top of the income spectrum, where they do no good for the overall economy and deprive our state of much needed revenue. So today, Hawaii is joining with six other states across the nation in a coordinated effort to tax extreme wealth as part of the Fund Our Future campaign. Legislators from across the country are introducing bills as part of a coordinated multi-state effort to ensure that the, wealthy, uh, the wealthiest among us pay what they owe so that we can invest in, the school, in our schools, infrastructure, and affordable housing that we, that we need to live a brighter future. As the federal government continually fails to act on this front, state legislators are stepping up. And they're stepping up to build a national movement for tax justice. So today we'll be discussing two proposals that will fix loopholes in Hawaii's tax code that are depriving our state of vital resources and preventing us from investing in the future that our keiki deserve. So now we as a state have a choice. We can either preserve the status quo and privilege wealth over regular working people, or we can fix our system so that we have all that we need to overcome our challenges and work toward a brighter future. The choices are clear. Now the legislature just needs to make the right choice for Hawaii's people. So with that, I want to bring up our first speaker, someone who has continually worked to prioritize the needs of Hawaii's working families the chair of the Working Families Caucus, Representative Janae Capella. Thank you so much, Will, and thank you to everyone who is here with us today. Hawaii deserves tax fairness. Currently, Hawaii saddles our low-income neighbors with the second heaviest state and local tax burden in the nation, while families who earn less than $20,000 per year pay 15% of their income in state and local taxes those who make nearly half a million dollars annually pay only about 9%. That is the definition of economic inequality. Hawaii is also one of only nine states that taxes all capital, that taxes all capital gains. These are the profits from sales of stocks, bonds, investment properties, arts, and, anti and antiquities at a lower rate than ordinary income. This tax loophole almost entirely benefits high-income taxpayers, including non-residents who, who profit from investing in real estate, our local real estate market. If Hawaii were to tax capital gains at the same rate as ordinary income, we would bring in roughly $90 million annually in brand new revenue, according to the Institute of Taxation and Economic Policy, 97% of which would be paid by the top five percent of income earners in our state. The bottom 80 would pay almost nothing at all. We need this revenue to fund our future. Too often, our keiki are forced to attend deteriorating schools that lack well-rounded education programs. Working families struggle to find housing that is truly affordable, while the wealthiest buy their second, third, and sometimes 10th sometimes home and 10th investment properties. When it comes to securing a sustainable future, we fail to fully fund the steps 
necessary to avert the climate emergency and preserve our environment for generations to come. Impoverished communities are missing out on essential resources like health care and basic infrastructure. My district includes most of the southern half of Hawaii Island. It is currently experiencing a drastic shortage in mental health access and services. This is leading to high rates of youth substance abuse and suicide. Some portions of my district even lack access to basic running water. These challenges are not inevitable. They persist only because policymakers lack the courage and determination to deliver tax justice that truly uplifts Hawaii's people. So this year, I call upon my fellow legislators to find the courage to fund our future, to fund our Keiki's future. Let's join our colleagues from across the nation in advancing tax pros prosperity and justice and tax proposals that will truly put Hawaii's people and their needs first before personal greed in the pursuit of prosperity for all. Let's fund our future and it begins with tax justice. Thank you, Representative Capella. Uh, now I'd like to bring up our second speaker. This is someone who has dedicated most of her career to creating a brighter future for Hawaii's keiki. I'd like to introduce Representative Amy Peruso. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. Um, over the course of the pandemic, we saw a significant increase in both the poverty rate and the number of individuals and families living in poverty in Hawaii according to recent research from the Center for Budget Policy and Priorities. The percentage of individuals grew from 9.3% to 11.2%, which is a 2% change, a 2% increase. And the number of children living in poverty in Hawaii grew by 3,800. At the same time, we are all well aware that the rich have been getting richer. The CBO projects that the top 1% income after transfers and taxes will have grown significantly faster than other income groups between 2016 and 2021, boosting its cumulative 1979 to 2021 growth to 281%. So the rich are doing better and our kids are in trouble. Making these changes to the estate tax, those proposed in our legislation, even without the elimination of the reciprocity exemption, is estimated to generate anywhere between 250 and 300 million dollars in additional state revenue, which could go towards repair and maintenance of our dilapidated and dangerous public school classrooms, towards feeding kids more healthy, scratch-cooked local food made by well-paid and beloved school cafeteria workers, and towards mental health services and wraparound support for kids who are really living on the margin. We could do that, and more, and we should. The amendment we also included this year does something else that is very important. It is unconstitutional to impose a different property tax regime on people who live on the continent but own property here. But we can stop giving them a tax holiday when it comes to the way in which they use intergenerational wealth to invest in property here. We currently provide a complete tax exemption to most property owners from the continent if the property is part of an estate. That's just one of the core reasons the uber rich park their money in property here, just as they used to do in New York before they eliminated that exemption. I'm not saying that lowering the uh, um, ceiling or eliminate the, eliminating this exemption solves all of our problems, but it gets us closer to tax fairness, generates revenue that we can use to protect and provide for the most vulnerable, and makes people from the continent who invest in property here, driving prices sky high for our local residents, finally pay something to their fair share. Mahalo. Thank you, Representative Peruso. Um, I'd like to bring up our last speaker today. Uh, she is from Hawaii's leading advocate for children and families. She's the executive director of Hawaii Children's, uh, Children's Action Now Speaks, Deborah Zisman. Thank you, Will. And thank you so much to Representatives Peruso and Capella as well. My name is Deborah Zisman. I'm executive director of Hawaii Children's Action Network Speaks and it is time to fund our future. 
This is about Kuleana. It's about privilege and responsibility for the wealthy to finally pay what they owe in support of our children and our community. In Hawaii today, almost half of our children live in families with incomes below a survival budget. That's according to local data from Aloha United Way this fall. Survival budget. That means half of our families cannot make it here in the islands anymore. And we are seeing families move away at a quicker and quicker rate each year. I am thrilled to see that our state legislature and our governor and lieutenant governor are standing together this year and cooperating to change this dynamic. And we intend to hold them accountable to those promises. It is time to put more money back in the pockets of our low and middle income families with things like an enhanced earned income tax credit, a child tax credit, or a dependent and a child and dependent care tax credit. The way to fund those is the taxes that Representatives Capella and Peruso just talked about. During the pandemic, when families received additional funding through the child tax credit, we saw that they put those dollars right back into the local economy. They paid their rent, they got themselves out of a little bit of debt. They bought food and school supplies for their children. We want to see more of that because that tax credit has gone away. If the feds won't do it, we need to stand up and do it for our children and families here in Hawaii. With these proposed new taxes on the ultra rich, we could make finally a deep investment in childcare and preschool in order to make it affordable and accessible to all of our families across the island. And we can finally invest in a much bigger way in truly affordable housing. Now is the time for our lawmakers to show up for our children and for our families. Let's work together and move these policies forward to make Hawaii a place where all of our children can thrive. Thank you.